Uh, first of all, thank you to the Chamber for the invitation. Thank you for the warm welcome. Um, just uh, so you know, my, my business background, uh, pretty basic. I was a salesman to start with and eventually ended up as a marketing and sales director for a company called Swatsco. You ever heard of Swatsco? Yeah? And if you have, you will know that it's a hair care company. And knowing that and seeing me, I do feel I owe you an explanation. <laughs> I don't think there's any point in denying it. I could sense what you were thinking. Uh, how is it possible for him to have worked for a hair care company? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, well, for your information, I had to test opposition products. <laughs> People say very strange things to you when you have this condition. Do you realize you're losing your hair? Which suggests perhaps that if I had been more responsible, I would have kept it. When did you first notice you were losing your hair? It was taking me longer to wash my face. So anyway, I had 15 very happy years with Swartzkopf, and uh, so I'm in the area of sales and marketing, the most, in my view, the most trivialized area of uh, business, lots of nonsense. Uh, I actually get people still saying to me, John, do you think salespeople are born? I said, I think it helps. <laughs> so that's the, kind of, that's the kind of nonsense that you get in sales. We also have stuff like features and benefits, which is the opposite to what customers are interested in. Customers are interested in benefits. And then, if you seduce them with a the benefit, then they're naturally interested to hear about how do you do it, the feature, and what have you. So, unfortunately, we've got it the wrong way around. Salespeople today, to this day, are still being taught that nonsense, uh, how to handle objections, when the true challenge for anyone in sales is how to anticipate objections. How long do you have to be in business before it dawns on you <coughs> that customers worry about various things? Whether they say anything about it doesn't matter. You should know, <coughs> and you should address it before they do. Upselling, which is... If you can imagine what customers would think if they heard about that, upserving is what leading organizations do. In other words, selling fits into their service edict, if you like. They don't go around. Uh, and another one, of course, which affects every industry and every profession, knowledge is, yeah, never has been, never will be, giving knowledge is power. Uh, knowledge does not belong to us, it belongs to those we serve. And the moment you decide that you must give that knowledge, then you've got to figure out how to give it and so forth and so on. So my brief um, uh, message today is about two gaps in business. I've got you know, stuff to give you later on on the table over there which explains in more detail. There are two gaps in business. Um, the first market gap is called access to product or services. It's absolutely full to overflowing. It's price driven, it's controlled by uh, customers. Uh, and yet the majority of people in sales, whether they run their own business or they work for a business, are in fact trying to sell in that gap. It's a complete nut of waste of time. You can promote in that gap, you can try and attract people in by you know, better prices and all that kind of thing, nothing wrong with that at all, but you can't sell in the first gap. <clears throat> the second gap is not access to product, but success with uh, product. I'll give you a very simple example, because this gap is almost completely empty. So let me give you an example. There's a product in our society called superannuation, very, very important product. Uh, how many people have got it? Everyone, because for 20 years it's been compulsory, yes? So there you go. So that's great, everyone's got the product. <clears throat> so if you were selling super, it wouldn't pay to go to market and say, hello, I'm involved in superannuation. What would people say? I've already got it. But then if you ask another question, and that's what leading organizations do, always asking good quality questions, how many people have an appropriate amount of superannuation so that when they enter the extended period of retirement, they'll have the funds they need to live the life they would like to lead? Answer, very few people. Not talking about losers, I'm talking about mainstream Australia. The facts of life are <clears throat> that although people have the product, they don't have what they should have. How could that possibly, how could that possibly have happened? Isn't having enough super more important than simply having super? So the second gap is absolutely massive. It is largely unattended to by most suppliers. They don't know how to measure it. They don't know it exists, but it does exist. The first gap is populated by customers. The second gap is populated by people. Customers are people. They do not go home at night to customer land. Always treat customers as people. Never treat people as customers. Customers will tell you what they want or what they don't want. People cannot tell you what it is that they need. Is there a difference between what customers need versus what they want? Of course there is. Of course there is. And customers know nothing about the need factor. So that's where selling comes in. The ability on the one hand to listen, and on the other hand to lead uh, customers. Not to interfere with what they've done in the past. Don't interfere with what they've done. Uh, tell them about the future and try and help them. That's what selling in the second gap is all about. I'd like to give you a very brief example, if I may. Many years ago, because I've lived in the, in the Hillshire for donkey's years, 
Uh, we uh, we have uh, three we have three children, uh, all girls except for two, and um, so when we were living over in Roxburgh Park when we first arrived in the Hills District, and uh, we we had a pool put in for our children, and uh, they made a terrible mess of our garden. It was a year before we could afford any landscaping. I called in three guys to give me quotes. Uh, the first two guys came in, very nice guys, separately. Yes, Mr. Lees, what do you want? First gap. And I knew what I wanted. How did I know? Because my wife had told me. <laughs> anyway, I said, we want bush rock, uh, paving, uh, shrubs. Uh, how much do you want to spend, Mr. Lees? Like as if I had a budget. But I gave them a figure, and that was the end of that. They then quoted me on exactly what I, the potential customer, said I wanted. Bush rock, pavers, shrubs, at the price nominated. Any complaint? None at all. Did they get the business? No. Why? Because the third man, who was very quiet, very quiet, there's an interesting paradox for you. Apparently in business you have to have a winning personality and be noisy. The most successful women and men I've met in selling are very quiet people. What's noisy about them, if anything, is the value of their proposition and their ability to present it. So the third guy didn't say, what do you want? He said, so tell me, what did you have in mind? Uh, and I said to him, well, we were thinking about bush rock and paving and shrubs. He said, that sounds very nice. Approximately, how much did you have in mind to spend? I told him. He said, okay. He then took notes, took measurements, asked my wife and I questions. How often did we entertain? How did we entertain? He went away, came back, gave me two quotes. First quote was for what I said I wanted. First gap, bush rock, paving, shrubs, etc. at the price nominated. Second quote, and by the way, he gave me a small uh, thumbnail sketch of each uh, quote as well, uh, talking his silver, showing his gold. And the second quote and sketch had the bush rock, the pavers, and the shrubs, but it also had a river pebble garden around the pool. And at the back of the pool, a bark garden, in the center of which was the most beautiful barbecue made out of sandstock brick. Price, 50% more. I wonder if you can imagine which one we bought, especially as Mrs. Lees was present at the time. <laughs> so that's what I mean by selling in the second gap. It's absolutely uh, critical that we understand how to get into that gap the only way to get into that gap is to acknowledge the first gap. So if you want to do business with anyone, just simply say to them, I do, I have, uh, take it you've already got this kind of product or service, I'm not here to interfere with anything that you've done in the past. Don't sell change to people, sell progress. Okay, that's what people need, progress. And by the way, they can't have progress without change. So that's what we have to do in business. Uh, the, the definition of winning which is known to all athletes, but not to many business people, is progress through struggle. Business is not supposed to be easy. If it ever falls into your lap, well, be grateful, but be suspicious, because it's not supposed to be like that. The best way to run a business is to figure out where is the second gap, learn how to specialize in that area, and you will separate yourselves from the competition. Thank you very much indeed.